Hello everybody, welcome to number 27, I'm Jack and I need to talk to you about something that's pretty shocking that I've just found out about E10 fuel. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it might damage old classics like this one. No, there's a far worse problem with using E10 and it affects every single car on the road that uses petrol, whether it's one of the oldest or the very newest car that's out. Let's take a quick look at what the government says in this short clip about E10. What is E10? E10 is a greener type of petrol containing up to 10% ethanol, which is made from materials like low-grade grains and wood. Why is E10 better? E10 will help the UK reach net zero by 2050, as it's the equivalent of taking 350,000 cars off the road. Is it suitable for my car? And conveniently, it ends on the subject of older cars and the problems of compatibility, which is what everyone has been worrying about, where really there is actually a much bigger problem. And that is the E10 actually causes an increase in fuel consumption of any car that's using it. So I first saw a headline on the Express newspaper saying drivers were having to fill up twice as much on new E10 fuels and I obviously thought that that was absolute rubbish and it was an attention grabbing headline the Express probably isn't one of the best papers but I thought I wonder if there's anything in it so I started reading more and obviously there was a couple of um, interviews with um, drivers who were saying that they were having to fill up much more often and I thought well I wonder there can't be anything in that surely so then I went and had a look at a few more articles which I googled um, say on Top Gear on the RAC website and I actually realised that ethanol is actually less energy dense than unleaded fuel. So that means that because it has this lower ed energy density, you have to use more. And therefore, your fuel consumption in your car will go up. Now, you're not going to lose any power because your car's computer will sort of alter the air fuel balance to make up for that loss of energy density. But your fuel consumption will go up. So I really couldn't believe this, but I did some more research and the US Energy Information Administration, the EIA, says that the energy content of ethanol is about 33% less than that of unleaded fuel. So that means that essentially, if you're using 10% in, in a mix with unleaded fuel, you are basically going to have um, a decrease of about uh, 3% in fuel consumption. Now E10 does have a quarter of the carbon emissions, so it's eight particles per molecule instead of, sorry, it's two particles per molecule of carbon instead of eight particles uh, per molecule like unleaded fuel. However, when you start to realize that you have to burn a lot more of it, that starts to negate the, the benefits also, it has far more evap evaporative emissions, so that's when you're filling up your car or when, it, when it's exposed to the air, the amount that goes into the atmosphere, and that is quite harmful for ozone. Now, I'm not an expert on all this. I'm sure that overall, well, I think probably overall, in terms of emissions, using ethanol or E10, um, it must be advantageous if we're doing it. But I don't think many people will realise that it's actually going to cost you more, not just because the price has gone up very slightly at the pumps, only one pence, but it's still something when prices are quite high. But when you end up having to use more as well, I think it would be nice to know that before we were just sort of bamboozled into it. So this does have the unexpected effect that for the very first time, I think that super unleaded is actually going to give you more miles to the gallon than normal unleaded petrol. Now for a long time the petrol sort of manufacturers have been trying to get us to buy super because they make more money on it um, but the truth is that in all normal cars it makes zero difference it's only if you have a really high compression engine that you need the high octane super petrol but for the first time now because in the UK super unleaded will be using E5 rather than E10 so it has a smaller concentration of ethanol um, the cars will actually have a higher miles to the gallon. Now all of this is, is just an example of the sort of half-baked thinking that I think the government is bringing into place to try and tackle global warming. Now I do understand that we have to do something about it and hopefully E10 on the whole will help somewhat but it just seems all rather half-baked. It's like the fact that they're just banning, uh, by 2030 I think, uh, or 2035, they're banning gas central heating but that will leave with most people with the only option of using heat exchangers. 
And the thing with heat exchangers, uh, or heat air pumps, whatever they're called, is that they only work for the most modern, airtight, and very well insulated houses. They just don't work in old houses. So, uh, you know, much better would have been to try and educate people to keep their heating lower. It's better for your health, just wear a jumper. That would, you know, having two or three degrees lower on your central heating, that would make a huge difference. Um, but I guess it would make too much sense. Too much common sense. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you for the next one.